so there's going to be a new CEO, Jack Dorsey, for the interim, then someone. Right. Uh, what needs to be fixed? Boy, there's a lot here, but I think it has to start with product. Um, you mentioned you showed that graphic of 300 million users. That seems like a, a huge number, but in the context of social media and Facebook with 1.4 billion users, um, they need to figure out a way to grow their user base, number one, from 300 million, and number two, to make them more engaged. That's what advertisers are looking for. So they need new products, um, and they need a way to engage consumers so that they, they stay on uh, yep. uh, Twitter longer. You know, I read a couple of times last night, a couple of different sell side analysts pointed to a post written by Chris Saka, uh, who uh, had an early stake in Twitter. And his point was basically that Twitter, as much as it might make sense to us, is really intimidating to new users. Is there value in that? There is. And, and one of the challenges is just getting on to Twitter. Believe it or not, the, of 300 million users, that's a big number. But there are 500 million uh, people out there that see Twitter every single day, yet they don't log on. And that's a problem for t Twitter because if you're not logged onto their platform, they can't sell advertising against I want to drive base. it forward. I thought Sarah Fryer's uh, Steve Jobs equivalency here on Mr. Dorsey uh, was great. Out of the New York Times, Farhad Manju uh, writes it up this morning. As everybody is, Twitter has brought out an accelerating set of improvements. Uh, Twitter remains a punishingly difficult service uh, to use. Twitter may be alone turning away more people than it attracts. And that moves right on to the key Paul Sweeney analysis, which is when does Google buy them? I mean, is that Boy. all this is? Is a ballet <laughs> for Google to take them out? That's been that's been out there for a long time. But you know, one could argue that, and, and quite frankly, Google has never gotten social right. They have Google Plus. It hasn't resonated with the marketplace. It's terrible. That's right. Thank and so you. that that Seth, is. A, do you use Google Plus? Uh, I try, but it doesn't really help. There it is. Right. That's right. There. Yeah, yeah, Facebook is is a winner, but Google Plus is not. So one could argue that that is a big hole in the in the Google portfolio. Twitter could fix it, but I mean, a lot of people say that Twitter's probably not even big yeah, enough Jack to Dorsey's really like, move the needle. Jack Dorsey's a Steve Jobs like, oh, you know, no, I who's going to run this? Who's going to make the decisions? I remember when, when, when Dick Costolo and Evan Williams went on tour together. When Dick Costolo yep. first started, they went and they did Ed boards around the country. And one of the things that they said, uh, that, that one of the things that didn't make sense at the time uh, was that they didn't really seem to understand uh, th where they were in terms of making revenue or growing their user We call that running a company. Who's going to run the company well, for Mr. Dorsey? That, that's right. I think one of the real questions is, well, day, day to day today, it's Anthony Noto, the CFO. He's taken on a, a very big plate of responsibilities, more than just the financial responsibilities. The question is, uh, do you give it to someone like that, an operational person, or do you give it to somebody who's really a technologist, who can really speed innovation of products to try to grow the user base and grow the engagement and therefore grow advertising? So, you know, there's a lot of questions. Is now, a lot of people would like to see Dorsey stay because he's the visionary. Let Anthony Noto be more of the COO, a strategic CFO, and let Dorsey be more of the Steve Jobs. Let me sit back. Well, I'm going to ask strategy. you this. Is, are, they, are they selling it to Google? That's the money question. Uh, it's, it's very possible. I don't think so. I think they, if you talk to Twitter, they feel like they have another big iteration left okay. to go, another big leg up. Um, the question is, can they execute on that? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is fascinating. Brian Weiser at Pivotal basically said what investors failed to understand about the company uh, is that Twitter was and remains a venture stage enterprise. There's an IPO, but they're not really a, full, uh, a fully grown company yet. Do you agree with that? I, I, I don't agree with that. I think they're actually, there's real revenue, there's real profitability, there's 300 million users. They're beyond the venture stage, in my opinion. Okay. It's simply a question, are they a niche medium or are they a mass medium like a Facebook? They're All right. $2 billion revenue. Less than 1% yeah. of digital ad revenue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just... And yet, for every event, it's Twitter I go on to. I don't go on to Facebook for an yeah. event. That, that's right. And so advertisers just haven't grasped it. They haven't figured out, is, is Twitter the way that I can really advertise my brand? Can I drive a uh, product? Um, so for advertisers, it just hasn't resonated yeah. yet, in part because 300 million users ain't what it used to be. Did you talk, yeah. to, but, did you, did you talk to James Murdoch last night? I did not. <laughs> All right. That's already <laughs> the quarter of the day. 300 million <clears throat> users are not, it ain't what it used to be. And, and to Vani's point, you know, Chris Saka's... Uh, advice that everybody's been reading uh, is basically that Twitter needs to own events in a way that it hasn't really yet figured out because yeah. people are on there talking right. about events.